Yeah, I mean, suppose we should. Well, we, should, we might as well just touch it. on the score. What was the score? Fifty-three ten. You were working it, weren't you? I was working. I had to interview three of the lads after the game. Oh, oh that's yeah. hard, isn't it? It's tough. It's tough. Because you have been there. Like, I've been in their shoes before where you've been battered and then you've got to go and speak to corporate people or do some hospitality and they've and you've and fair play, you got to, you what you they all wore it, you have to. Um but yeah, it was obviously I think that was probably one of the best performances I've ever I've ever seen from any team. Um, that we saw from France the weekend. I feel like France are a few years ahead of England on their sort of journey. They're now, for me, I think they're the best team in the world. If they play like that, I think they'll beat anyone. I think you'd have put any team from any era on that pitch against France at the weekend. I think France win the game. Would they have been better if Eddie Jones was there? It's obviously they've they've made the change to go with... Steve, and I don't think you can expect England to just turn into the best team in the world overnight. You saw that. But how I think, have they gone so backwards? Well, I think sometimes with you saw it with Leicester when Steve took over Leicester, they took a fair few big scores early doors, and it took him a long time, I think, to embed his policies, his way of thinking, his way that he wants this team to play. And it took a while. Obviously, that's all escalated when you're the England coach because. Yeah. You can't lose games when you're an England coach, especially not at home, and you definitely can't lose by 50 points. So, obviously, he's going to get a lot of heat and a lot of media attention, but um, I do think France and Ireland are operating on a different level to other teams at the moment. I think you've got Scotland next, and I think you've got England and Wales who are probably knocking around the same sort of boat with Italy. Um, that's the current state of affairs, I think, in the Six Nations. Um, and I just think, France had pretty much the perfect game. Um, England got dominated at the breakdown, couldn't get a thing going, couldn't slow the French down, couldn't get anything going themselves. And the French were brilliant. I've never seen a better performance. Anton Dupont was just next level good. Um, and I th- if France play anything like that in the World Cup, there's only one team going to win the World Cup. But on that side of the draw where England are because of the madness of the World Cup draw, England could easily find themselves oh. quite comfortably in a semi-final and then you're two games away from winning the it's World Cup. Madness, and anything could happen in rugby, it, mate. Anything it, it, could happen it in one madness. game. It is madness. It's whole basically beat thing. Wales or Fiji, probably. So, and, exactly. And see off Chile some... Yeah, <laughs> so, it's, it's, like, yeah, they, England could find themselves in a semi-final and then one game of rugby with anything could happen, England turn it on one game... Or, you know, there's a red card. Any With the, with the tackles and everything that's going on at the moment, you, you could find yourself in another final and then you're in a World Cup final. Yeah, because people are saying the other side, you know, with Scotland's group, Ireland, oh, yeah. you make it out of there, you, yeah, you're going on to win Yeah, the your World boys Cup. are gone, early doors. Yeah, <laughs> They've got to put their holidays now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're basically going to win a World early Cup. Early yeah, yeah. yeah. um, Just one, one bloke for me, and I know he's my favourite player ever, Freddie Stewart. Even in that, somehow... <sighs> Yeah. He was still outstanding. Yeah, Freddie's brilliant. The bloke's outstanding. He's such a good player. He, he just, he was one person that stood out for me still that was just still cracking into it, doing everything right. Yeah. Best, taking every high ball. The best person I ever played with on the high balls was, was Brownie. Mike Brown was like incredible. Yeah, by the way. Yeah. yeah how good is he he's playing, playing amazing. I'm so, so chuffed for him. So when a ball goes up in the air, there's no better feeling of you know, knowing, oh, Brown would get that. Yeah. And he just used to get it every time and then beat first couple of people because he's so nuggety and he and Freddie Freddie's exactly the same Freddie and he's so Freddie's so big he's like he's like having a second row at the back but a second row that can shift that can jump can fend people he's so big and powerful and he catches the ball sounds simple he he doesn't catch the ball stood still he catches the ball going forward so you, he makes five six meters on every kick um, he's so reliable. He was one of the players that still stood out, even when you lose by fifty points. You, you think no one really would stand out. I still thought Freddie was was exceptional, and he's now first name on that team sheet for England. From a professional point of view, Danny, yep, that final French try coming off a first phase like that, you see it very rarely in international rugby. How did you see it? Yeah, I think for any sporting fan, rugby fan. I, you know, it doesn't matter if you love rugby, you watch that and you go, wow, that was, 
that was slick. They scored one not too dissimilar a couple of years ago at Twickenham, which was incredible, but that one's even better. Um, you do all these first phase moves in training, you practice them all week. Very rarely does one come off as as good at, th- at that as that. And I think as well, the re- the weather was so bad. Like it, it was it was so wet, that ball's so slippery. And every single pass is in front of the man at pace. Uh, the skill level was exceptional to execute it like they did was incredible. But you look at it from an English perspective and the only way you score tries off set piece is if someone hasn't done their job properly and England didn't defend it properly the first pass beats about three lads which then compromises everyone on the sorry to be with Nors on it or compromises everyone out wide then you've got lads shooting at the end when they shouldn't shoot in because but they have to because the guys inside haven't done their job so I think for Kevin Kevin Sinfield will watch that and be having nightmares because his team hasn't defended it properly um, but as a, as a slick as a move it goes it's it's one of the best tries ever as a nine yep Talk to me about Dupont because I'm in that game again. Every game we watch him, we're like, oh, look how good he is. Look at him. He, that game. Yeah. he's Another level. He's on a different planet. He really is. He's playing a different game to all us other nines. Um, I always remember Quinn's playing again, our way in cast um, probably about nine, ten years ago now. And... Um, <laughs> before the game we looked at this this scrum half and he was just this little lad like he didn't look the part he didn't look like a rugby player and I remember Chris Robshaw going lads this little lad's just straight out of school don't like look like he's got much about him let's get after him today and we were like okay mate yeah let's get after him let's get, I'll get into him and then 10 minutes into the game I remember he took a quick tap he like bumped Chris Robshaw, handed off Nick Easter, ran around Nick Evans, scored his try under the posts. And Chris Robshaw went, watch the nine, lads. He's a decent, he's a decent <laughs> little player. Right? And I always thought, I was like, who was that ki- that guy? Like, who yeah. was that nine? Because I remember trying to tackle him and it was literally like hitting a brick, like a, hitting a brick wall. He was so strong and powerful, but he was so small. I was like, how has he done that? And then... I always thought a few years later, I was like, I wonder who that nine was. Like, I wonder who it was. Turns out it was Anton de Pont. When did you realise it was Anton de Pont? Oh, it was about, it was probably when he started coming, pre, really coming through with Toulouse and coming through with France. And I was like, that's the, that's the nine. Yeah. Uh, Mum, Mum, have you got that program yeah, like, from that game? <laughs> I'm not let me just sign it. it. Program, I'm like, I was like, fucking Anton de Pont. And, I, and then for, ever since then, I've always kind of like been rooting for him because I'm like, this guy <laughs> yeah. was incredible. Yeah. He did something like incredible from so young. And I always thought, I wonder where that guy is. And then it turns out That's it was him. Cool, really. And I then he's obviously that. now, he's like, he's the best player in the world. He, he's playing on a different level. He sees things quicker than other people but then he also has the skill to execute it under the most high intense pressures um i saw him at the tiktok launch and um because I, I gave him a shirt that day we swapped shirts after the game and i had a picture and stuff with the, oh, the casket and he came up no. and, and we and so i was like i oh, probably he won't remember me and um he was like oh mate i've still got the shirt from that game oh, fuck, and i was like cool, fanboying man. over this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, mate, you're like the best player in the world. Like, so amazed that you've still kept my my shirt. That's really what did nice. You what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got it. It's in, it's in, it's in the cupboard. Got uh, it by no, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig that out because that might be worth a fair bit now. But no, nah, you're like, what a what a player, what a bloke. He just seemed nothing nothing phasing. I think the thing you said, mate, so consistent. Like to be that good, you can be that good every now and then for one game. Things go your way. But he's like that every single game, whether it's Toulouse or it's France. He's playing nine or ten. He's always the best player on the pitch. He's he's next level. It just feels like he, everything he touches, yeah. he's like minus touch. Everything yeah. he touches turns to gold. Like his kicks, there's always a bit of space for him. I feel like people are just giving it to him. Normally when you big lads hit a nine, like you've banged them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he gets, just stays. He gets lit up or th- people think they're going to light him up and he'll just shrug you or step underneath you. Yeah. He's so powerful for a little for a little lad. Like, it's it's incredible. No, it's amazing, that. 